The topic of our discussion is alcoholic liver disease. So alcoholic liver disease occurs due to liver damage resulting in inflammation of the liver due to chronic use of alcohol. Almost 10 to 15% of the cases of alcoholic liver disease progress to liver cirrhosis and then ultimately end stage liver disease or chronic liver failure. The risk factors for alcoholic liver disease include excessive use of alcohol and in most cases almost 60 to 80 ml alcohol per day causes disease in 20 years. Moreover, outside the meal consumption of alcohol also increases the risk of the disease and it is more prevalent amongst the females rather than the males. One factor that is thought to be influencing this is the estrogen levels. So excessive estrogen levels result in an increased permeability of the gut resulting in excessive absorption of toxins in the blood. These toxins are transported through the portal blood into the liver resulting in alcoholic liver disease. Ethnicity also plays a major role in the disease. For example, the black population and the Asians are more prone to developing the disease than the white population of the USA. Genetic polymorphism also results in alcoholic liver disease. For example, alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme oxidizes the alcohol into acetaldehyde. A variant of alcohol dehydrogenase known as ALDH or alcohol dehydrogenase 2 is present almost in 50% of Asian population. So ALDH2 is not a very effective enzyme. As a result, there is decreased oxidation resulting in increased toxicity of alcohol. Presence of infections such as hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus causes the disease to progress quickly into liver cirrhosis or end-stage liver disease. Metabolic disorders such as iron overload also synergizes the effects of the alcohol resulting in increased incidence of the disease. So alcoholic liver disease occurs in three phases. The first stage is the hepatocellular steatosis which means accumulation of lipid inside the cells. Hepatocellular steatosis progresses into steatohepatitis which can be regressed after the abstinence from alcohol. Steatohepatitis further progresses into steatofibrosis or liver cirrhosis. Almost 10 to 15% of the cases of alcohol liver disease progress into liver cirrhosis. In the early stages of steatofibrosis, abstinence can cause regression, but in most cases, the disease progresses into end-stage liver disease. So the first phase is hepatocellular steatosis. Steato means lipid or fat and cis means accumulation. So as the name shows, there is excessive accumulation of lipid inside the hepatocytes. Once alcohol enters the blood, it is transported to the liver where it is metabolized. So alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme oxidizes alcohol and converts it into acetaldehyde. Meanwhile, NAD is reduced into NADH. Excessive alcohol consumption results in increased production of reduced NADH. This excessive NADH shifts the cells from lipid catabolism to lipid biosynthesis. So as a result, there is increased production of lipids inside the cells which accumulate in the liver cells resulting in steatosis. Moreover, alcohol also results in an increased secretion of lipoproteins which also add on to the lipid concentration of the hepatocytes resulting in steatosis. Moreover, there is increased peripheral lipid catabolism. Therefore, the blood contains increased triglyceride levels and free fatty acids. So all these processes result in increased lipid deposition inside the cells resulting in hepatocellular steatosis. The next phase is alcoholic hepatitis. Alcohol directly and indirectly damages the hepatocytes resulting in inflammation. This inflammation of the hepatic tissue due to alcohol is known as alcoholic hepatitis. So how does alcohol damage the hepatocytes? We will discuss this in detail in the next slides. The third and final step in alcoholic liver disease is steatofibrosis. So for a prolonged period of time, excessive consumption of alcohol results in a cycle of injury and healing. 
alcohol causes the injury to hepatocytes which then heal and as a result there is a continuous cycle of injury and healing in a chronic disease injury and healing are going on hand in hand and as a result there is activation of stellate cells and kupffer cells so stellate cells result in increased collagen deposition inside the liver tissue and the kupffer cells result in increased release of growth factors so excessive collagen deposition results in fibrosis and increased growth factors result in nodularity of the liver hence the disease continues to liver fibrosis or steato fibrosis so the question is that how alcohol damages the hepatocytes there are certain mechanisms through which alcohol directly and indirectly damages the hepatocytes so excessive and chronic alcohol consumption results in increased production of acetaldehyde this acetaldehyde forms acetaldehyde protein adducts with the cellular proteins such as cytoskeleton and inside the cell membranes this formation of acetaldehyde protein adducts disrupts the cytoskeleton and cell membranes of the hepatocytes resulting in swelling of hepatocyte moreover acetaldehyde also results in lipid peroxidation lipid peroxidation means reactive oxygen species formed as a result of excessive alcohol consumption attack the unsaturated lipid inside the cells and these lipid could be either in the cell membrane or they may be performing important functions inside the cells so as a result there is damage to the integrity of the cell which results in hepatocytes death so chronic alcohol consumption also activates cytochrome p450 activation of cytochrome p450 results in production of reactive oxygen species which includes hydroxyl ion hydrogen peroxide and superoxide ions so these reactive species directly and indirectly damage the cellular organelles and cell membrane which results in damage to the cell and ultimately lead to cell death chronic alcohol consumption also results in decreased metabolism of methionine so as a result there is decreased glutathione production glutathione is amino acid that is formed by methionine and cysteine amino acids so since there is inhibition of methionine metabolism there is decreased availability of methionine and decreased production of glutathione glutathione is important in smooth functioning and detoxification of the hepatocytes so once there is absence of glutathione there is reduced detoxification and the reactive oxygen species and toxic wastes continue to accumulate inside the hepatocytes resulting in hepatocytes damage and ultimately cell death moreover alcohol also increases the gut permeability to endotoxins and these endotoxins through the portal blood flow reach the liver where they cause activation of inflammatory mediators such as tissue necrosis factor and interleukin 6 activation of these inflammatory mediators results in damage to the hepatocytes and recruitment of neutrophils and leukocytes to the site of inflammation this recruitment further adds on to the damage resulting in hepatic injury moreover alcohol also affects the sinusoids resulting in release of endothelin 1 from sinusoidal endothelium so endothelin 1 constricts the sinusoids which results in decreased blood flow and ultimately leads to damage to hepatic tissues so all these factors result in damage to the hepatocytes resulting in hepatocyte inflammation or alcoholic steato hepatitis the affected liver grossly appears enlarged and in certain cases the weight of the liver might range up to 5 to 6 kg the liver appears yellowish due to accumulation of excessive lipid inside the cells it also has a greasy texture which is again due to accumulation of excessive fat inside the cells some micronodules might also be visible grossly in a cirrhotic liver the first stage of alcoholic hepatitis is steatosis so the histological picture reveals small lipid droplets inside the cells which later on come together to form large particles so this enlargement of the lipid particles pushes the nucleus to the 
peripheries or side of the cell. As you can see here, these here are the fat-laden hepatocytes. This stage resolves with the abstinence to alcohol. The next phase is steatohepatitis, which means the inflammation of fat-laden hepatocytes. So the histological picture reveals swelling of the hepatocytes, which is known as ballooning. This ballooning is occurring due to formation of acetaldehyde protein adducts, causing disruption of cytoskeleton of the hepatocytes. So the ballooning of the hepatocytes ultimately leads to necrosis of these cells. Another important feature of alcohol liver disease is that the swollen hepatocytes or the ballooned hepatocytes include eosinophilic bodies known as Mallory dank bodies. These Mallory dank bodies are formed by the tangled intermediate filaments such as keratin 818 and ubiquitin proteins. As you can see here, this is a ballooned hepatocyte. It is swollen and it contains amorphous bodies known as Mallory dunk bodies. These Mallory dunk bodies are also present in non alcoholic fatty liver disease and certain other diseases, therefore, they are not a specific feature of alcohol liver disease only. Moreover, there are neutrophils around the necrotic hepatocytes. This hepatocyte here is swollen, so it is nearing the necrosis. And as you can see here, there are multiple neutrophils around this swollen hepatocyte. The same is going on here and in this area. In addition to neutrophils, mononuclear cells are also often present in steatohepatitis. Steatohepatitis can also regress with abstinence to alcohol. The final stage of alcohol liver disease is steatofibrosis. And the histological picture reveals evident fibrosis. As you can see here, these bluish areas indicate fibrosis. So the first of all, there is sclerosis of the central vein in which the vein becomes thick and narrow. There is a formation of fibrotic scar in the perisinusoid area, which then progresses and involves space of disc. And then ultimately it surrounds portal tract. So let's say these are the hepatocytes and these are the central veins. This here is a portal tract. So what happens in this case, there is scarring around the central vein, then in the perisinusoidal area and ultimately space of disc, which extends to involve the portal tract. And the same thing goes on in the entire liver. This pattern of fibrosis is different from chronic infectious hepatitis. And the pattern is known as chicken wire fence pattern. Since the fibrosis is laid in a fence like pattern, within these fibrotic areas are clusters of hepatocytes. As you can see here, these here are the fibrotic bands, and within these fibrotic areas are the hepatocytes. These hepatocytes within these fibrotic areas form nodules, and the nodules in alcohol liver disease are classically micronodules. Hence, it is micronodular cirrhosis. Micronodules means the nodules are less than 3 mm in size. This type of cirrhosis is also known as Lennox cirrhosis. Alcoholic liver disease at early stages presents with a specific symptoms such as malaise, anorexia, and weight loss. There might also be a history of abdominal pain which is localized to right hypochondrium. An acute attack of alcohol liver disease resembles acute liver failure. Often there is hyperbilirubinemia, which is due to the dysfunction of the hepatocytes. The liver function tests reveal elevated ALT and AST levels. One classical feature of alcohol liver disease is that AST is elevated more than the AST. The ratio between AST and ALT is 2 ratio 1. This is a specific feature of alcoholic liver disease. ALP is also elevated in certain cases and the blood picture also reveals increased triglyceride levels. Ultrasound of the abdomen reveals fatty and enlarged liver. The treatment of alcoholic liver disease is abstinence to alcohol. 
and nutritional support to counter the malnutrition developed as a result of chronic alcohol consumption. In cases of liver cirrhosis, which occurs in almost 10 to 15 percent of the patients, the only treatment is liver transplant. So this concludes our discussion about alcoholic liver disease. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.